All right, hi, my name is William Waltrack. I'm the CEO of Highlight, and this is our sexy data scientist, Peter Vigilante. Hello, everyone. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about image selection for web. What to consider when picking an image. We've got something really easy to, for you to remember. We've got the four S's. So, so Peter, five. five S's, so selecting, okay? Mm -hmm. So our five S's for picking the right image, so we're gonna start with selection of image, sizing of image, saving of image, scaling of image, and the SEO component of an image. All right, so number one, let's talk about the selecting of the image. What do you take into account when selecting the right image? So when selecting an image, it all depends on the context of where it's going on a website, but just my general rule of thumb is try and keep the subject in the center of the image. Reason for this is on some websites, your image is bound to get cropped. Whether it's a portrait or a landscape image, it may have to fit into a square area on your website. So just note that you may have to have a crop, make sure that the main focus is in the center so that say someone's head doesn't get cropped off in a portrait or the main person that's sitting in your rule of thirds on the left doesn't get cropped off as well. For social media, one thing to consider as well, your header image or your main image um, has to have less than 20% um, text coverage in it. So selecting the right image is extremely important. So that's S number one. What's S number two? So S number two is right now going to be sizing our images down. Okay. So I actually have an example image right here. So we just took this image and it came right off of the camera. So it's not even in the right format and it is massive. So this image here is about 7,360 pixels wide and 4,912 high. So when selecting this image, if you're writing something for Porsche, if you're writing something about cars, this would be the right selection for an image. Exactly, because the subject is generally in the center. If I crop anything on the top, bottom, or left, right, I still get the general picture in there. All right, so but, let's talk about sizing. Yeah, so let's actually scale this down to something that's more reasonable because this image is massive. The image itself is about actually 43 megabytes in size. So when when thinking about a screen, your full HD screen is 1920 pixels wide and 1080 pixels tall. So when you want an image, you want to make it as small as possible file size wise, uh, but not distorted or pixelated. So we're, we're shooting for about that 2000 pixel mark. Exactly. Though. Anything around there. So I'm going to just, we're just using the quick Mac preview, uh, no fancy software here. And you can also do this in Windows, just using the Windows image editor. But I'm just going to go to tools and adjust the size. You can also do this in Photoshop, but we wanted to use something that everyone has access to. Mm -hmm. So right now, as Will said, you want to stay within general browser or actually computer resolutions. So here's some of the rule of thumbs. Something like 2048 for the width. This is pretty large. It'll give you a lot of resolution and it will look great on these nice Mac Retina displays or a lot of these iPads or other things that have high resolution displays. But note, this is still going to be a larger file size. So one thing to think of, think about is where's that image going to be used? So if it's going to be used in the header or in a large place, uh, this is gonna be an appropriate size. If you're just gonna use it for a thumbnail somewhere in the image, this is overkill. Go way down. Mm -hmm. So my next rule of thumb, which I like to always set my images to, is no larger than 1280. So this is actually a good sort of TV resolution, which a lot of monitors still have. And most websites, they don't really go any wider than this. They're usually in, say, what's called the grid. And for resolution, keep it at 72. This is the standard resolution of pretty much all regular monitors. Modern, say, Mac monitors with Retina Display, they do go up, but you're still just safe sticking to 72. So I'm just gonna go OK. And now this image saves down. So the image isn't actually that size, it's now, here we go. So you can tell I barely lost any resolution, at least visually from what I'm seeing here. If I zoom in and compare it to the other one, yes, there's missing little bits, but once again, where's this image going? Is anyone gonna be zooming that close in? Okay, so let's go with saving. So this is where the next S is. So that's a third S. So selection, sizing, saving. What do we want to consider when saving? Well, let's go and see the actual format. So I'm just gonna go file export. And 
Right now, I'm going to export this image, and the formats that you want to use are between two standard formats. Now just note for any of those more advanced users out there, there's many other formats, but we're just going to keep it simple, and the basics are either a JPEG or a PNG. So when do you want to use a PNG? So a PNG, this is considered, or what you would call, a lossless format meaning it's not going to lose any of its resolution, it's going to keep all of its data, it's going to be the most pristine image. However, this makes it extremely large in file size, so it's not ideal for, say, complex images like this Porsche. Where it is ideal is simple images with very few colors, like your logos or any graphics, and any kind of image that has transparency. Exactly. So if you have, say, a drop shadow even, or you just want to put it in front of another background with circles around it, PNGs are perfect. So for your logo for your website, use a PNG. Uh, where do you want to use JPEGs? JPEG is any time you actually are using a photo. So anything that has a lot of complex uh, colors going on. So just a portrait of yourself, that's considered a complex photo because there's lots of colors going on in there. So JPEG for anything else. Perfect. So we're going to save it as a JPEG. But before that, we're going to move on to the next one, which is going to be SEO. This is where we want to consider what we're going to call the, the image. If you're writing about Porsche, you may want to title it Porsche. If you're writing about cars, you may want to title it something about cars. Or if there's some specific topic you're writing about, this is another opportunity to add keywords. We talk a lot about SEO. This is one more place to do it well. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we're going to title it Porsche. So that's just one keyword. We're not really giving this all that it can be. Where are we going to put this? If we're going to put this on our website, for instance, what should we add to this? So, okay. First, we know the proper pronunciation of Porsche is Porsche. Yeah. And I'm not sure exactly this is a spider model. I think it's the 918, but I could be wrong. Porsche will go 918. So if someone is now looking for a Porsche 918 Spider, that's what they're going to find. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was named image 234.something, they're never going to find it under that. So it's just one more way of organizing your information to be found, which is important for search engine optimization reasons. Mm -hmm. And now this is just a little nitpick, but note that I separated this with dashes. When whenever naming actual files, you're going to want to use dashes. Dashes are basically the equivalent of a space for these file names. Underscores, they're used elsewhere by Google, so it's not really a great SEO thing to use the underscore. It's used by developers for searching for code functions. So that's why we stick with dashes for separating the file name. Okay. All right, perfect. So let's save that to your desktop just so we can see it. Perfect, and we can already see this is a nice 170 kilobyte image, so much smaller. And you can also, I usually just leave the quality where it is, so that's a good size there. So just by scaling and saving, we saved ourselves, we are down to 0.3% of the original 43 megabytes. So imagine that you're browsing on a mobile phone where it's a little bit slower. Uh, you now have the opportunity to load this a lot faster. So this is why those two things are extremely important. Okay, so let's save that. The last thing we want to talk to you about is going to be uh, scaling. So not necessarily sizing the image, but how it scales when it's on the site. So Peter, what are the things that we need to consider when uh, scaling an image or when placing an image into a site? Okay, so when placing an image into a site, there is a couple of ways it gets placed. So certain, uh, what's called an object fit. So when you put the image onto your site, you want to try and either get it to fill the area that it's in, or you want it to cover a specific area. Like imagine you're watching something on Netflix and the movie is wider than your screen. You get black bars on the bottom and the top because it's scaling. So what yeah. kind of scaling is that? Yeah, so what that's doing is this is the contain scale where the image is always going to fit onto the screen even if it has to have empty space at the top, empty space at the bottom in a landscape photo or in a portrait where there's empty spaces on the side. So that is when it's always going to contain or fit inside the screen. Perfect, so the other one is called cover. What is cover? So cover is always going to fill the entire screen. 
but this is where you risk potentially cropping your image. Not necessarily a bad thing because you may want to fill the entire screen to make sure there's none of that what's called letterboxing around it. So scaling down is whenever we talk, whenever we place those images, um, when we're resizing the browser or looking on a different size window, um, it's going to scale, scale down. It'll keep the same file size, but it'll actually just scale down. Mm -hmm, exactly. Now, all of these apl apply in different areas. So the cover and fill methods, they work really well for background images where it's not really the most important portion of the site, it's just in the background, background data. The other ones, contain and fit, work really well for what we would refer to as the physical image. So say images that are in your blog post or in your content, you don't want these ones to be cropped uh, at all because they're part of what the user is reading. So those ones work well for the fit and contain methods. Perfect. All right, so to quickly recap, when saving an ed uh, when using an image for web, these are the five things that we consider. So selection, make sure we have the right image. Uh, sizing, make sure it's sized down to the appropriate size and we don't waste any extra download bandwidth or make it, don't make it too large. Um, uh, that's the saving component. We want to make sure it's also saved in the right file format. If it's transparent, PNG. If it's not transparent, JPEG. There's also a quality slider. Seven to eight is generally good. You're not going to lose much, uh, much, much quality there. Quality. Uh, scaling is the other size. How is it going? Is it going to fit? Is it going to cover? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a little landing page that's we're going to put it down below, and you're going you're to see how different. Uh, image scaling factors go in uh, how they how they behave when you resize a window. Mm -hmm. They look like. And the last one was SEO. So make sure that it's saved with relevant keywords. When embedding it, make sure it's described with relevant keywords as well. And there's an uh, alt text tag that's selected. Mm -hmm. So thanks very much. If you have any questions, reach out to us below. Make a comment below, um, or reach out reach out to us. I am William Highlight. Thank mm -hmm. you.